this is Roy Cannon. And this is Robert Newman. And we're from Epic Gaming Night, and today we're going to be taking a look at Warriors of Middle-Earth, an expansion for War of the Ring. Warriors of Middle-Earth is an expansion that brings factions to your War of the Ring thematic war game. The expansion adds a faction deck for the Free Peoples and Shadow Armies, and faction-specific dice that you'll use to trigger your different faction cards and to recruit faction units. There are also call-to-battle cards, which will be used instead of events in combat when those units are close enough to be called. The Ents muster in Fangorn and can be used to help an adjacent army. They roll three dice and hit on four or plus, and they can also be used to stop combats. The Eagles are mustered in Eagles Eerie, and they can be used to help deal wounds in combat and also negate Nazgul's leadership abilities. Deadmen of Dunharrow can be spawned at Eric if Aragorn is nearby, and their abilities are very similar to the way the Ents work, being able to help out in combat and stop combats. With these three new factions for the Free People, the Free Peoples actually have a chance to fight back a little bit against the Shadow. The Hillmen of Dunlin come out in Dunling and can be used basically as cannon fodder or people to take as wounds, which can help the rest of your army last longer. They can also help you do wounds in combat as well. The Broods of Shelob can help you do extra combat damage if you did the most damage in combat and can also kill off leaders. Corsairs of Umbar muster in Umbar and help your Easterlings and South runs keep battles going. They can be taken as casualties instead of elites in a siege, and also can help move other troops into a battle currently taking place. The Shadow Army factions allow the Shadow player to have a few more tricks up their sleeve. There are several cards from the Faction Event deck that are particularly awesome, like March of the Ents, which lets you make a full-on attack with your Ents, or Evil Things, which can allow the Shadow player to draw a Hunt Tile from the Hunt Bag to help corrupt Frodo. Also several regular event cards that replace old event cards in your regular event deck having to do with the different factions in Warriors of Middle-Earth. Warriors of Middle-Earth adds lots of new interesting options to the game. You have all sorts of cool miniatures and units that can call to battle and help out your other guys, and you can also have cool faction events that can turn the tides of battle. It makes an already thematic game even more thematic. So uh, that was Warriors of Middle-Earth. It is the factions expansion for the War of the Ring. I definitely like all the different factions you have in here. It adds a lot more flavor and theme. You have yep. eagles and tree ints and un undead from the Corsairs and the Unbar guys that can do the ship ships and come up and the spiders um, that makes it feel very thematic to when Schmeagol and Gollum and them were trying to get in over here. Yeah. There's a lot of effects with the cards that can affect those guys. And then you have the Dunlinding men, which are just kind of like cannon fodder a little bit over here. Um, what do you think about the faction stuff overall? Um, overall, I really liked it. I thought it just added more into the folklore of Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely made it feel more Lord of the Rings-ish, but it, it didn't make it too complicated. I would say that this... This expansion to the game um, was a lot simpler than the other expansion, mm -hmm. but it made the factions fun. Not that the other one didn't make them fun, but I, I really enjoyed playing with the Treants, but mostly enjoyed playing with the Eagles. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, Eagles really are really cool because they can... All of the um, factions, if you have them in play and they're close enough to combats, you get extra combat cards that you can add into oh, yeah. battle. Um, and they can do all sorts of different things. Like the Ents can like stop battles or let you roll three extra dice at the end of combat to try to kill some guys off. The Eagles let you roll one extra dice, but they, they stay on the board. The, the Ents are going to go away each time you use them. Um, of course, or the, um, the Undead guys are kind of do like some of the same sort of stuff. Um, you've got the Spiders that can let you take out units if you do more hits than them, but then you have to take the spider off the board. All the stuff's really actually simple because they're mostly one-time use or if you roll bad on a die, they, they go away. Yeah. Um, so they add just a little bit more flavor, a little bit more theme to the different areas of the game. And I think it's pretty exciting. Um, what do you think about it adding to the combat for the Fellowship? Because normally the Fellowship is always defending. Well, I think that's a great point because typically you don't have combat with the fellowship. Yeah, you're, just, yeah. you're just running and hold on, can I retreat now? Hold on, can I go into my stronghold? It's all now? about stalling. Yes. Um, where this actually doesn't hurt as much because if you play as a fellowship player, you're going to lose a lot of men. It's just going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But this 
you're going to get your reinforcements now with these factions and it actually takes an edge off of not feeling so just deprived of not being able to do anything and also what i love about this uh expansion is the eagles they have a reach of four spaces yeah yeah and they definitely help the defending army and so you know if you're the shadow player you have to take that into consideration now i think it helps not necessarily even out combat because removing a, a guy from a fellowship when they're dead they're actually put into the box you don't get to bring mm-hmm. them back but adding this it doesn't necessarily make it equal but it it makes it where you now have a step up. Like, you actually have a chance to possibly even take back a spot, mm-hmm. right? Where yeah. before, if you lost a stronghold, just, okay, count it as a loss and try to defend somewhere else. Because you wouldn't want to waste troops trying to take something back because to For attack sure. a stronghold is yeah, ridiculous. You, the, the free peoples, if they're attacking a stronghold, yeah. I mean, they might catch you're doing one something that's undefended. Wrong. If you're Maybe. attacking a stronghold, it's really hard to do. Um, the ints are really cool because, like, I, ha- I played a game with my dad where um, they were... There was a whole army about to attack Lorien, and I had a ton of ints that I had built up the first half of the game. Um, and then all the ints smashed that army. So basically, Lorien stayed protected because he was trying to get rid of Galadriel because she was activating extra stuff. So yeah. it adds a bunch of interesting things into the game where the free peoples can actually take out some um, shadow armies. Where normally the only way they can take out shadow armies is by hiding behind their stronghold and trying to take yeah. them away slowly. Um, so it definitely adds a few more interesting things. If you aren't necessarily a fan of the whole political track and stuff like that, like not being able to fight back as the good guys, this can add a little bit more options for you in that. Um, for the shadow armies, Corsairs are awesome because they add more mobility for your, um, Southlings and Easterlings. Um, the, the Dunley men allow you to, um, have some more like cannon fodder guys. They're just kind of like peasants and stuff. You can kind of yep. turn them into like regular units if you play the right cards and then they can become um, part of your regular army. And then the spiders are all about doing multiple different things. The spiders are actually pretty cool because you can damage guys. There's also several cards where if they're the spiders are in the same location as the fellowship, you can play it to like make them draw a tile out of the bag or make them gain one corruption. And they can kind of negate that with the normal ways that the fellowship negates those sort of things. But it adds a lot of flavor to, to the game as well. <clears throat> So overall, what do you think about Lords of Middle Earth? Um, overall, I I love it. Um, it adds more plastic. It adds more dice chucking. Uh, it makes combat more relevant in the game for both sides of the players. Because mm-hmm. typically, like I've said before, and it's not hard to add in. No, not so. hard at all. I, I would say this is definitely the easier of the two expansions. Mm-hmm. The cards are self-explanatory. Um, the to get the factions on the board, it's it's self-explanatory. You have an entire deck, but all the all the deck text on those are not as complicated as the ones in the normal no, deck. Not at so all. and you're cycling through those like so quickly it doesn't add to your hand size. That's so. probably my favorite part of it is the fact that the deck cards don't add to your hand size. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you're limited with six and sometimes you have really amazing cards that you can't afford to lose. Right. And now you can go through that deck and uh, make a little stockpile yeah. for when you want to use them. I definitely like the fact that the uh, action die doesn't actually count against like your other action limits because this right. this action die for the factions is just going to be used for factions Faction abilities, so you can use like the event dice to play some of your other faction mm-hmm. um, cards. But if you want to like recruit guys and different things like that, you're not going to be using your other dice. You're just going to be using this specifically, yep. so it doesn't bog down your other actions. It's not like, oh, I really need to use the fellowship, but maybe I should do some faction stuff. Now you're going to have a completely different die that you use for that. So, so Warriors of Middle Earth, I think it's pretty awesome. Boom. Thanks so much for checking out our review for Warriors of Middle-Earth, the expansion for War of the Ring. Make sure to leave a comment down below what crazy monster or creature or character you would love to see added to the War of the Rings board game, and we'll see you guys next time. Make sure to hit us up on all of our social media, and we'll see you then. Peace. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.